When I was 30 years old, I had just lost my job, I was nearly $200,000 in debt, and I knew nothing about saving money and building wealth. Over the next several years, I built an eight-figure e-commerce business, I became a millionaire, and I developed a list of habits that helped me turn around my financial life. So in this video, I wanna talk about seven habits that keep people poor and show you how to overcome those bad habits so you can take control of your financial life and start building wealth. Let's get started. Bad habit number one is not investing in yourself. One of the best ways to build wealth is to acquire skills that people are willing to pay for. Essentially what you're doing here is you're increasing your potential to earn money. For example, if you're really good at marketing, then people will pay you for your marketing expertise. Or if you teach yourself how to code, then you can use those skills to develop software that people will pay for. Unfortunately, many people go through life without investing in themselves. They might finish high school or an undergraduate degree, but as soon as school is done, they stop learning. And unfortunately, when this happens, their earning potential starts to decline. To give you a personal example, I was 24 when I graduated as a mechanical engineer, and my first job paid $46,000 per year. Now, I knew if I wanted to become wealthy that I needed to make more than $46,000 per year. I also knew that my earning potential as a mechanical engineer was somewhat limited, and I realized if I wanted to increase my earning potential that I needed to acquire additional skills. So shortly after I graduated, I started investing in myself. On nights and weekends, I started teaching myself how to become an entrepreneur. I taught myself how to build websites, how to source products from overseas, and how to market and sell. Now, the best thing about these types of skills is once you acquire them, nobody can take them away from you. And as a result, you increase your earning potential for the rest of your life. In my case, I took my entrepreneurial skills and I built an eight-figure e-commerce brand that eventually 10 x my salary. Now, you don't have to become an entrepreneur. That's just the path that I chose, but there's an endless list of skills that you can acquire that will make you more valuable to an employer, like learning how to negotiate, how to become a more persuasive writer, or becoming an expert in a particular software program. So at the end of the day, the positive habit here is simple. Never stop investing in yourself. Bad habit number two is not understanding your income and expenses. Once you start making money, you'll wanna get a clear picture of your finances. And I'll tell you a story to help explain this point. So health and fitness has always been very important to me and I've made a conscious effort to eat healthy ever since I started going to the gym when I was 16. Almost 20 years later, I hired a cycling coach and when he asked me about my diet, I told him that I ate healthy, but he still challenged me to track what I was eating. Now what I discovered by tracking what I was eating was pretty shocking. Even though I was eating healthy food, my macros were way off. I was eating far too many carbohydrates and not nearly enough protein. Ultimately, this experience taught me that believing that you're good at something and actually being good at something are not the same thing. And often the best way to figure out if you're actually good at something is to track what you're doing. And that's because the numbers don't lie. Now, you can apply this lesson to your finances. And this is a great first step because it gives you a clear picture of where you are financially. So whether you think you're good with your money or not, I challenge you to track your finances to see if you're actually good with your money. And in doing so, you might uncover some bad habits like paying for services you no longer use or just overpaying for things in general. To help you with this step, I've included a free financial planner in the description. This planner helps you record all of your income and expenses and then it gives you a score to tell you how well you're actually doing with your money. Additionally, this planner will also help you create an emergency fund manage your debt, and save for retirement. So be sure to check it out. Bad habit number three is putting things on credit. Many people have developed a belief that debt is part of life, and as a result, they lose complete control of their spending. Unfortunately, many people use credit cards to pay for things that they don't need, like fancy clothes, gifts, and expensive meals out. The big problem with this is credit cards come with extremely high interest rates, in most cases between 20 and 30%. This means you could end up paying hundreds or thousands of dollars in interest before you pay off your debt. And unfortunately, this money is just wasted. It's pure profit for the credit card companies, and it's money that you could have used for saving and investing. To overcome this bad habit, you have to learn how to control your spending. And to control my own spending, I created a rule for myself. And that is, if I can't afford to buy something in cash, I won't buy it with my credit card. That way, I know I have enough money to pay my credit card off at the end of every month so I can avoid the high interest rates. Now, I know there will be exceptions to this rule. If you have an emergency medical bill or you can't afford food for the month, then a credit card can help you bridge the gap. But in general, you'll wanna get in the habit of only using your credit card when you can pay for what you're buying in cash. Bad habit number four is paying yourself last. 
After getting a paycheck, many people pay their bills and then spend most of what they have left on shopping and entertainment. Then at the end of the month, they might save or invest what little they have left, if they have any money left at all. If you live your life this way, you're paying yourself last. And this is a risky habit because there's a good chance you'll go months or even years without saving or investing any money. A better habit to adopt is paying yourself first, which is an idea from the book, The Richest Man in Babylon. In the book, author George Klassen recommends saving or investing a percentage of every paycheck before you spend your money on bills, shopping, or entertainment. Now, if you're currently living paycheck to paycheck, then you might think you can't afford to do this. But more often than not, people surprise themselves. You see, if you set aside 10 or 20% of your paycheck for saving and investing, then there's a good chance you'll figure out how to get by on 10 or 20% less. Of course, this means you might have to give up some luxuries, but that's a habit worth forming. And that's because paying other people first makes them rich, but paying yourself first will make you rich. Bad habit number five is not having an emergency fund. An emergency fund is a savings account that has enough money in it to cover three to nine months of living expenses. You only use this money to pay the bills if you lose your job or to pay for unexpected emergencies like medical expenses, car repairs, or home repairs. Now, the reason it's important to have an emergency fund is because it prevents you from going into debt when things don't go to plan. So if you break your leg, you can cover those expenses with your emergency fund instead of maxing out your credit card. If you're wondering how you get enough money to fund your emergency account, you do that by paying yourself first, which is what we just talked about. So ideally, you'll take at least 20% of every paycheck and put that into your emergency fund until you have enough money to cover three to nine months of living expenses. Bad habit number six, is not investing early. Einstein once said that compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. But to reap the rewards of compound interest, you have to start investing early. To give you an example, if you opened an investment account at the age of 20 with $1,000, and then continued to invest $83 every month until you were 70, you'd end up with $465,000, assuming a 7.2% growth rate. Now, if you waited until you were 30 to open the same account, you'd end up with $225,000, which is less than half. But if you wait until you're 40, you end up with only $105,000. The point here is simple. The earlier you get your money working for you, the better. So once you have three to nine months of living expenses in your emergency account, you'll wanna use at least 20% of every paycheck for investing. I understand that getting started with investing can be daunting, but do yourself a favor and figure out how to invest your money sooner rather than later, because the longer you wait, the more you lose out on any potential gains. Now to help you, I provided some basic investing guidelines in the financial planner that I have linked below in the description. But in general, you'll wanna diversify your investments, minimize your risk, and avoid leaving excess cash and savings accounts. And bad habit number seven is buying liabilities. Poor people get into the habit of buying liabilities, which are things that cost you money and take away from your net worth. In general, liabilities are things that lose value over time, like a car or a boat. In contrast, rich people get into the habit of buying assets, which are things that pay you and add to your net worth. A few examples would be investments like index funds, businesses, or rental properties. The reason assets are so powerful is because once the payments from your assets cover your living expenses, you're financially free. So if it costs you $5,000 per month to live, but your assets pay you $6,000, then you no longer have to work and you're free to live life however you choose. So if you're spending your money on things that lose value over time, like fancy clothes, cars, and gadgets, then you're severely impacting your ability to build wealth. And to fix this problem, you want to develop the habit of buying assets. All right, I hope you found these tips helpful. And if you did, I think you'll find my other videos helpful as well. So I encourage you to check them out. Finally, if you want to take control of your finances, be sure to download my free 8020 financial planner that I have linked below in the description. Thank you, and I'll see you soon.